it's clear that our Lord is talking to the Pharisees here, uh, and they were the ones who were beating a servant and ultimately killing the son, a prophecy of his own death. But like all things that Christ said, the majority of them at least, there was also another meaning, a deeper meaning, or an ap- a wider application of his teachings. <clears throat> because this vineyard, obviously, because it's a, a, um, an analogy or a metaphor that uh, Christ uses many other, wa- and many other times as well, is the people of God. So now that vineyard is, of course, the church of God, the people of the church of God. And we see here working in this vineyard of the people of God, unworthy men, and women too, probably. People who were unworthy of it, people who didn't want to give up its fruits uh, to those who needed it or to those to whom it belonged. We still see that. Unworthy men and women from the top down, not the Holy Father. And it's not the majority, but there, there are those, there are those of us who are unworthy. We're all unworthy. There are those we may shake our head and go, "What is going on? What kind of church is this?" The fact is, though, that because this church is the people of God, because it belongs to God, because it's the mystical body, it still produces fruit. Because God's in charge, and He will use the wretched in order to get the good. However, he doesn't want it to be that way. He wants us all to be good, especially those of us who are in responsibility uh, within his church. <clears throat> the problem is, is that of course, especially when members of the hierarchy, that's deacons, priests, bishops, don't live accordingly, don't uh, try, strive to live accordingly at least, then the fruits that they may make Some of them will become sour grapes, as Isaiah says. And many of them will not be able to be distributed. People will miss out. Graces will be lost. And souls may be lost with them. This doesn't apply only to the members of the hierarchy, though. Because we are all workers in the fields. We are all workers in the vineyards. We are all called, therefore, to work well, to work faithfully, to the best of our ability. God doesn't expect the impossible from us. He doesn't expect us to do things which are beyond our capability or beyond our understanding, but he does expect us to do what we can. Because if we don't do what we can for God's love and for the love of his people, then again, grace is merits and maybe even souls may be lost the saints talk about uh, those who had these mystical experiences and they've seen souls like the in this mystical way they said if only you could understand the value of one soul the value of one soul in itself is not the same as the value of god but God has deemed to uplift the value of the soul to almost that, because he himself shed his blood, even for one soul. If one soul could be saved, he has shed his blood for that one soul. He asks us, however, to participate in that work of distributing those graces which he has earned already for us on the cross to distribute them to one another. Again, it's... As, a, as the hierarchy of the church, and the hierarchy of the church is the priests and the deacons and the bishops, that's our primary role, that's what we do. Hopefully, that's what we're meant to be doing. But even you, as, you know, as lay, lay people, as, they, as you are called, as non-ordained people of, of God, as the part of the, the, what they call the common priesthood, you are also offered, you are also baptized in order so you might offer sacrifice also, so that you can also work in this vineyard of God. You mustn't underestimate your value, the value of your work, even the little things. You know, just the other day, we celebrated uh, the feast of St. Therese of Lisieux and a little way. Even the little things she decided to do with great love 
and they became very valuable. The sweeping of the floor, the picking up of a piece of paper here or there, just little things, things that no one else would see but God would see. She'd do them with the motive of the love of God and souls would be given grace. She would earn merit. It's really that simple. For those of you who, uh, who have been bosses or have owned businesses know that um, everyone can contribute to the work even despite their lack of ability or their little, little ability or understanding, there's always something that you can find for them to do, and God is the same with us. So no matter, even if you feel useless in God's hands, you're not, because you're in God's hands. He made you, and he can make you a part of his work. With this in mind, therefore, it's certainly nothing to make us anxious about. We make... It's, Our life should be one of complete offering to God. In the morning we wake up, we make an act of offering God, I offer you this whole day, please do something good with it. It's very very easy. You can make a more complicated prayer if you like, but that's basically the idea. And then during the day you remember this little offering and you re-offer yourself. And at the end of the day you do an examination of conscience and you see, have I been able to live up to that offering today or have I not? How well have I contributed to this vineyard of God? What can I do better tomorrow? It's simple, these simple tools are what help us build up our spiritual life. Make it easier that when we go to confession, it's not, I don't remember doing any sins. Have you done it? And that's because you haven't really examined your life for the last three months. And it's hard to remember what you did three months ago, let alone you know, yesterday. But in all these things, as St. Paul says, as we work in the vineyard, there's no need to worry. You know, if we had a real vineyard, I don't know if here anyone has a vineyard, um, we do have need to worry. We've got to get rid of the pests, hope it doesn't rain, or there's too much sun, the, bur- the grapes will explode, whatever. But because God is the ultimate landowner, he will take care of everything else. The, um, one of the, uh, the early fathers commented on this particular story, and he says that the, the hedge, the hedgerow around the vineyard, as said in the Gospel and in Isaiah, is a symbol that God will provide everything necessary for us to work well, that our work may be successful. And so, as St. Paul says, there is no need to worry that we won't be successful. The only way we won't be successful is if we don't do anything. If we can't do something because we don't have what we need, St. Paul says, pray, and God will give it to you. He will give us what we need. He will never leave us wanting in all aspects of our life and not just what we need but that most beautiful precious gift as he says here the peace of God working for God can be difficult sometimes strenuous Saint Thomas Aquinas says that the spiritual labor especially is much more difficult than both physical and intellectual labor but the price or rather the the wage is peace of heart and eternal life Let us therefore make an examination of our lives. When we work, do we work for God? Yes, we love him. Yes, we come to church. But what about the other six days of the week? Even if we do come to church the other six days of the week, what about the other hours that we're not spending um, at the sacraments or at Mass? Are we doing it for love of God and for love of souls? You know, that great prayer that we learned from Our Lady of Fatima. It's for love of you, Jesus, for the conversion of poor sinners and reparation for the sins against the Immaculate Heart. This prayer that she asked the children to pray often when they suffer and often during the day. Even things like this help us to make our day supernatural. These are the things that will help us to become holy and you are all called to be holy. When you all die, we should have a whole load of saints. Saint so-and-so of 2J. We should have a whole load of them. We could be the holiest place in in the galaxy. That would be interesting. We could have a mass canonization for all of us. Please, God, that would be nice. Have all our faces up there in the Vatican. It would be an interesting thing to see. In any case, sorry, I'm just imagining it with a picture of the church. It would be a unique canonization, I'm sure. But we can do it. Whether we get canonized or not, that's not important. But what's important is that we become canonizable, if that's a word. And we can just by hoeing the ground and picking the grapes. 
so that the people who need them, including ourselves, may receive the fruit of our labor, the fruit of the labor of Christ himself. Let us pray to Our Lady, who oversees all our work, who even oversaw the work of Christ in a certain way, gave him the ability to work, gave him his body, that she may also strengthen our bodies with grace so that we may work faithfully and with joy for God's glory, for our sanctification and the salvation of all souls. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.